himself and he's the one that distributes it the way he wants. And then we also saw that it is not for us to be super, you know, superpowers or superhumans like, so that we we'll now be more than others. We saw that the reason for those gifts is for all to profit, is for the church to make profit, for the church to benefit. So when we are gifted, we are gifted so that the church will benefit, so that the church will grow, the church will be edified. Hallelujah. Then we also saw, um, you know, the characteristics of the gifts. We saw that they are gifts. So it's the Holy Spirit that gives it. We don't need to pay for it. It's not something that it's paid for. So it's not a reward. It's a gift. And then we also saw that it's supernatural. And then we also saw that it is given by the Holy Spirit. So we need to be in a relationship, functional relationship with the Holy Spirit to manifest these gifts. And because it is the gift of the Spirit, He is the one that manifests this gift through us. You know, unlike any other, you know, unlike our normal life as a believer, as a Christian, as a spiritual person, you know. But for this gift, the Holy Spirit um, manifests this gift through us as He also wills. And then we also saw the reason a lot of people don't operate in this gift even when they have it and we saw that one of the reasons is because of ignorance Paul said I do not want you to be ignorant of spiritual gifts so which means people can be ignorant of spiritual gifts now we know because some people used to think that spiritual gifts are for certain kinds of persons no it is given to anyone the Holy Spirit and he can it, it can be given to anyone and like we said that it can be asked for and then we also say because it's a gift, it can be stirred. So if, for example, you used to uh, operate in certain... I've met a lot of people that are like that, that think that life has become hopeless for them, maybe because they missed it in their walk with God, or, you know, something happened. And then they now walk off thinking that whatever it is that happened to them or they operated in, in time past, that they cannot operate in it anymore. But I want to let you know that Whatever the canker worm, the palmer worm has eaten, the Lord is going to restore it back to you in many folds in the name of Jesus. Only yield to him and he's going to do that. And then we also saw the lack of inadequate or inadequate teachings, that is lack of sufficient teachings or proper teachings and wrong teachings. Because these things are not properly taught or they are, you know, just taught, you know, inadequately. A lot of people don't know and then they don't operate the gifts of the Spirit. Then we also saw which many people actually in that, um, in that state are afraid. A lot of people are afraid that they will run off course. They, they are afraid of heights. Just like people are afraid of heights in the physical, there are people that are afraid of heights spiritually. So they don't just want to run off course. They don't, they don't want the Holy Spirit to take hold of them and then. So they want, to, they want their minds, their physical senses to always be, to understand what is happening. So they don't want to run off course. So they are afraid that maybe they will now derail and go into error and go into bad doctrine and, you know, maybe contact demon. You know, things like that. Okay? But then we saw that if we are going to deal with this fear, we just have to stay on course with the Holy Spirit. When you stay with the Holy Spirit, the Bible calls him the spirit of truth. We saw that in the book of John chapter 14. He calls him the spirit of truth. And the Bible said, he that called you is faithful and he would do it. So if he is the one that gave you this gift, he, would, he did not just give you this gift and then walked away. He's also there to help you. So when I stay in course with the Holy Spirit, I don't need to be afraid if I'm going to miss it or not. Because fear is not condoned in the kingdom. You don't have to be afraid. If the fear you have is not the fear of God, then that fear is not a fear you should have. Any other fear you have is not the right fear. Any other. If no matter you are afraid of insecurity, afraid of the future, afraid of these things are not of God. Any fear that is not the fear of God that is gripping you is not of God. And you have to deal with it because fear is a spirit. So we also say stay, you have to stay with the word. When you stay with the word, you're not going to run off course. And then we saw that analogy, the train and the rail. The train can only run as far as the rail, um, you know, 
runs. So don't go beyond the rail. Once you go beyond the rail, then you're going beyond the word. And once you go beyond the word, you're going off course. You know, I had, um, when I started walking with the Lord and started, uh, you know, touching uh, certain things in the spirit, I got to a point, you know, you know, the devil always wants you to go off balance. Either two way, away from the truth or maybe below the truth. He doesn't want you to, he just doesn't want you to be on course. He just wants you to be afraid not to be in it. Or then when you're not want to be in it, he wants you to, be, to run off. But the Bible tells us somewhere in Ecclesiastes that a, a wise man avoids all extremes. So you stay balanced. So one of the days, you know, after certain powerful manifestation of the Spirit of God, we went for an outing and then there was manifestation of the Spirit of God everywhere. The power of God was everywhere. Then I came back. I just heard that voice. I said, listen, see, everything that God is doing in your life is not covered in the scripture. There, there's just something special about you. There's something special about you. There's just something different about you. Not covered in the scripture. And it sounded very spiritual. But thank God for, you know, because that's another thing that regulates you. Submission to one another. Submission to one another. If you read that chapter 12 of the book of 1 Corinthians, you're going to see how the Bible, immediately the Bible was done talking about this gift. And I started talking about members of the same body, who we are, what we are. That we are not just, we don't just stand alone. If you are the eye, you can't just say, I am the eye, I want to stand alone. If anything happens to the leg, you, you, the tears will roll down from the eyes. So they are all connected. The heart cannot say, ah, no, I don't need... The heart needs other, the, the heart is protected by a lot of other things. You can't say, I, I just want to be alone. Then the heart will now come out and stay on the head. It will die. Do you understand? So you can't just say, this is, just, there's something special about. But you know, I didn't know so much about the scripture. We are just coming up and then we didn't have, we didn't have this kind of opportunity that a lot of you now have. But then, you know, one day while we're just talking with other believers, and then I start seeing that God cannot take me. In fact, that whatever I've, I've even experienced is not even as much as what God has even planned. Because sometimes you can just see one small power, and then your head will blow. Ah, have you called down fire? Somebody has done that. So, have you raised the dead? Even if you've raised the dead, there are people that have raised the dead, and they are still alive. Have you been taken by chariots of fire into heaven? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, you know, keep that word uh, boundary. Very, if you keep the word boundary, you're not going to be afraid. So then I said submitting one to another. I don't know if I mentioned it yesterday. But then, you so, did I mention it? Submitting one to another. That, it's very important. Very, very important. Don't ever get to a point where you just, you just, you just it's you. I know this is, is, God spoke to you and there is no confirmation of any kind. No, 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 no. There ought to be, there ought to be, there, some, there ought to be someone else that confirms or at least knows or can perceive what the Lord is also saying to you. Hallelujah. So I grouped the, you know, by study, you know, people that have studied this so much, they grouped, if you discover the gifts are grouped into three. Then the first one we saw, uh, uh, we call them the revelational gifts. The gifts that reveal, okay, I think I mentioned the utterance gifts first, like, Right? The vocal gifts. And then I say that they are tongues, interpretation of tongues and what? And prophecy, okay? Then the third one, the second one is what? Power gifts. And I say that they are what? Gifts of faith, okay? Gifts of faith and gifts of healing. All right? Now, we also saw revelational gifts. And it's working, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and... Descending of spirit, that's what the Bible calls it. It's not discernment, it's descending of spirit. Do you understand? Someone said, Do you have, it seems you have the spirit of discernment. You're going to see that. Hallelujah. Okay, so I said that with tongues yesterday. I want to, you know, redress and show us some things. I said with tongues yesterday. I'm going to talk about that then. So I said with tongues yesterday. And I told us that tongues is the door to the supernatural but then the tongues we are talking about here now as the gift of the spirit is different from the sign 
the tongue sign that comes after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I just said now? At the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence shown in the scripture, we saw it in the book of Acts chapter 2, then in the book of Acts chapter 10, when uh, Peter went to Cornelius' house, the Bible said that they were baptized by the Holy Spirit and then they spoke with tongues. And then we also saw it with Paul and those young men. So once there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence is usually the speaking in tongues. But it is different from the gifts of speaking in tongues, of different diverse kinds of tongues. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the first one is a sign and it's a prayer language given to us at the point we are baptized by the Holy Spirit. And that first one is everybody has it. Did you see that? Everybody has it. Once you're baptized by the Holy Spirit, you have it. And then because all of us have it, it's a prayer language. That is why if I ask you now to start praying in the Holy Spirit, you open up your mouth, open that fountain, and you start praying in the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I just said now? But the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, it is the ability to speak in an unlearned tongues, unlearned language. Language that is not learned. Learned. And this gift comes by the unction of the Spirit. So it is different from the prayer language. It comes by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Like what I, I said yesterday, that as we are all seated now, if the Lord gives us a message now, and someone that has the gift of diverse kind of, kind of tongue begin to speak, the person begins to speak, and then the person speaks. Now, what the person is, is praying will be different from that person's usual tongues. I know some of us have experienced it, and we may not know what it is. Some of us experienced it at a point where the power of God came upon you, and you, you heard yourself saying something you have never said before. They, they were not rehearsed. You don't even know what you're saying. But they are, it is a particular language you've not spoken. It's not your regular um, praying language. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so it is a vocal miracle of the Holy Spirit. So it has nothing to do with our intellect or linguistic ability or linguistic learning. It doesn't have anything to do with it. So it's a gift, not a sign. It's a gift, not a sign. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And one of those signs is what? They shall speak with new tongues. The first thing he said is that they are, they're going to cast out demons. Then the next one is what? They will speak with new tongues. Now that they will speak in new tongues is a sign of infilling of the Holy Spirit. But the one we are talking about now, diverse kinds of tongues, is a gift. Supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, so just like any other um, spiritual gift, received by faith and operated in faith. So, let me clarify the definition now. It is supernatural utterance by the Holy Spirit in languages never learned by the speaker. That is, never learned by the speaker, nor understood by the speaker, and many times not understood by the hearers. Do you understand? And this, because it is a gift, it operates as the Spirit wills. I can ask you to speak in tongues now, pray in tongues. You can pray in tongues. You open your mouth and pray in tongues. You just let like that. But you can't operate this one like that. Just like any other gift. You can't operate this one like that. So sometimes you begin to speak. I, I heard about a missionary that went to minister somewhere and there was no interpreter. 
But when he opened his mouth to speak, he just trusted God. There was, he, he didn't know what to do. When he opened his mouth to speak, he started speaking the language of that people. He was preaching to them in the language of that people. But when he was done preaching and on, that was all. He could not do that again after the preaching. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. He could not because at that time the Holy Spirit came upon him and activated that gift of diverse kinds of tongues. So that's it. That's, that's what tongues, what we are talking about here. Tongues, what it means. Do you understand that now? You grab it, right? Okay. Please be answering me because most of the things I'm going to be saying today are things that you'll be wondering if these things are right. But because we have had wrong teachings or inadequate teachings, what I'll now be teaching will be sounding odd. Whereas it is what you know that is odd. What you used to know. Hallelujah. Okay. So, um, of course we know that these things, the one of the purposes of these things also is to attract people. To attract people to be saved. So they'll be able to be saved. Hallelujah. Then the next gift of utterance is the interpretation of tongues. I know I mentioned these things yesterday. I just want to redress, redress them. Interpretation of tongues. Now, this is now the gift that interprets the diverse kinds of tongues. Do you see it now? That interprets the diverse kind of tongues. You know, we say that diverse kinds of tongues as a gift. It is not the gift of tongues. It is the gift of diverse kind of tongues. Okay? So, we say that it is a supernatural utterance of the Holy Spirit. That the speaker had not learned, may not even understand, and then the hearer may not even understand it. Except that person has this gift now. So, interpretation. So, what is it? It is the supernatural showing forth by the Spirit. The meaning of an utterance in tongues. So when there is the manifestation of diverse kinds of tongues, then the gift of interpretation of tongues interprets it. Now, like what I said yesterday, it does not translate it. It interprets it. It tells what it is saying. It shows what it is saying, what diverse kinds of tongues is saying. So, diverse kinds of tongues may last for two minutes. And then it will just be one sentence that it will be used to interpret that. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm going to show us some things. I want us to read 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 14. Then we can go back to what I'm saying. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul actually took out time to talk about this. Now, one of the reasons is because these are gifts that are readily, that is not, not readily now, that are demonstrated. They are usually seen. They are usually and easily seen. Unlike something like gift of faith. So because it is vocal, many times it is usually this gift that causes disorder when it comes to in church. Not, not because, not it, I'm not saying that it is the only gift that causes disorder. But because it involves utterances, vocal. Do you understand? So Paul now said, ah, this is how it should be done. If somebody has a message in tongues, let one, two persons give. If you have people that have those diverse gifts of tongues, and then there's a message received in tongues, one, two should give. And then another should test what is being said. Then if there's an interpreter, the interpreter should interpret what these two have said. Do you understand? Because if not, if we are up to 10 that have these gifts of diverse tongues, you can imagine this person is speaking, this person is speaking, and then 10 persons are speaking at the same time. You see the disorder now. So he took out time in the book of 1 Corinthians 
chapter 14 to really talk about that. Okay, let me read from verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Now, verse 5. I would that ye all speak, speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive a divine. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by, prophes or by prophesying or by doctrine. So Paul is saying, if I come up because I have this gift and I come up now and then I now start speaking these gifts to you now, you won't understand anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? You won't understand. But if I come up and then the hand of the Lord comes upon me and I begin to speak in this diverse kind of tongues and then there's an interpreter. The church is edified. Do you get the point now? Okay. I'm going to tie three of them together. Okay, let's flow. So its purpose is to make the diverse kind of tongue understandable. So it cannot stand alone. If there is no speaking forth of the diverse kinds of tongues, then there is no interpretation because you can only interpret what has been spoken. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And I also want to believe that in any church that there is diverse kinds of tongues, then God is going to also give an interpreter. You get the point now? Okay. Okay, so it can manifest privately in our private prayer place also. Sometimes you begin to pray, but then suddenly it's as though there's a veering. You begin to say things. You know you are speaking a language. But you don't know what that language is. And sometimes it can prolong. It can, you can just stay there. You're speaking a language. You're speaking a language. You, the hand of the Lord just comes upon you. And then you don't start speaking a particular language. Then sometimes as you're speaking that language, you're receiving the interpretation immediately as you're speaking it. That is it. As you're speaking it, you're receiving interpretation immediately. So at this point, you see yourself writing down the things that you are saying in tongues, which you are now re receiving with your understanding. Now, sometimes you speak it and then you now get to a point, you now begin to utter, as you're, as you're now uttering in your known language, you are very sure that what you are saying are the interpretations of those things you said in tongues. Some of you have experienced it. So without the speaking of the tongues, then there is no interpretation. I'm going to bring prophecy, then I'm going to tie three of them together. Hallelujah. So the third gift of utterance is prophecy. your eyes have been maybe 45 degrees looking at me, maybe to stretch to 90 now. Because most of the things we call prophecy are not prophecy. They are not prophecy at all. Prophesy! It's not prophecy that the person is giving. It's not prophecy. So we're going to see that. So what is prophecy? Are you ready to learn? Okay. Prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the simple gift of prophecy, just the same way the Bible mentioned there, is for edification, for exhortation, and for comfort. It's for edification, for exhortation, and for comfort. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 3. But he that prophesieth 
speaketh unto men to what? Edification and exhortation and what? I want us to read it again. Please, I want you to open your, your eyes and your ears. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and what? And comfort. Now verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. So when there is the manifestation of tongues and the interpretation of tongues, when both of them come together, prophecy has happened. That's prophecy. You want me to show you? Okay. Verse 5. I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interprets. For greater is he that prophesied. So this is the one that, prophes that prophesies. Bible says greater is he. Than he that speaks in tongues. So, if you're going to use mathematical um, expression, so we we'll say that the one that speaks in tongues is greater than the one that speaks in, the one that prophesies is greater than the one that speaks in tongues, right? But then the Bible says, except he interprets. So which means, he that speaks, he that prophesies is greater than the, he that speaks in tongues. But he that prophesies is equal to he that speaks in tongues and interprets. Is that what that thing says? So which means when there is a manifestation of tongues and interpretation of tongues, prophecy has happened. And they are all for what purpose? For the edification of the church. So when I speak in tongues alone, I am edified. The church is not, nobody, the church did not even understand what I said. So the church is not edified. But when it is interpreted, then the church is edified. And when prophecy is given, church is edified. And what did we say prophecy is here? For exhortation, for edification, and for what? Comfort. Now follow me. Because prophecy is not what you think. Prophesy to me. It is not prophecy. Okay? This is when you will announce with me again. Okay. Now, the gift of prophecy does not need any other gift to complete itself. Like the gift of tongues. Or the gift of interpretation of tongues. Do you see it? So it doesn't need any other. other uh -huh. So to speak for God or to be God's spokesman, that is it. That's what prophesying means, to speak for God or to be God's spokesman for edification, for exhortation, and for comfort. So in the gift of prophesy, uh, prophecy, there is no foretelling there is no telling of what to be it does not speak about what is to be I need you to understand it does not speak about what is to be it could be a gateway to release what is to be but the simple gift of prophecy is not what talks about what to be that is a foretelling let me mention what does it here. It's word of wisdom, but we're going to get there. So when I come to you and then look at you and say, you went to Unizik, right? I'm not prophesying. I'm only saying what is, which is a word of knowledge. It's just that this word of knowledge is being altered by the vocal um, gift of prophecy. But what is in operation at that time is a word of knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know it's confusing because you have watched it over, over television. Prophesy, prophesy. 
that I am telling you what has been or what is, is not prophecy. It's not prophesying. It's not foretelling. I am only mentioning what is, which is the manifestation of the gift of word of knowledge. Okay, follow me. So it is an inspired utterance, but it is different from preaching. Now, in preaching, you can have an inspired utterance. Someone can be preaching and get into prophecy, that is prophesying. And what do I call prophesying now? The person now begins to release words for the moment that the church may be edified. You see what happened to us on Friday morning. The word, that word God gave to us is actually a word of prophecy. That's 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 7. How many of you were edified? How many of you were comforted? That's it. That's it. So that's what, so, the, you know, there's preaching and then during the preaching, the hand of the Lord comes mightily upon that and then he now begins to speak, begin to speak words that the church may be edified at that time. Now, it could also, as the preaching is also going on, it could also be, you know, to bring warning now, not the warning that will now cast the church, you know, down, make the person. Because at the end of the gift of prophecy, is there's going to be an edification. Do you understand? And comfort. It's not the one who say that God is angry at you. It's not prophecy. It's not prophecy. Do you understand? And then you leave it there. It's not prophecy. Okay, let's flow. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, somebody will now be looking at me and saying, Ma, what are you saying? What are you now talking about? I know about prophets. Some of you are even trying to shut me down. Don't shut me yet. I know about prophets. Now, there are offices. There's an office called the office of a prophet. That one is different. Mentioned in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. The Bible talked about the gifts of Christ. If you heard when pastor came up yesterday to talk about for about 20 minutes, he talked about the gifts of Christ. Mentioned, you know, some things. And one of those gifts is a gift of prophecy. It's an office of a prophet. Now, what a prophet does is that a prophet is the one that foretells, speaks the mind of God concerning what is and what is to come. That's what a prophet does. Now, in the office of a prophet, you have revelational gifts. Because the prophets will need the revelational gifts to function in. But the simple gifts of prophecy is just, call it a tool to release what God has in his mind for the church. There are other gifts that manifest through the word of, of prophecy, through prophecy. You know, prophecy is utterance. Like word of knowledge, word of wisdom can go, can be released through prophecy. But the office of the prophet is different. So anybody that occupies the office of the prophet will have the revelational gifts manifest in, in the person. So that, that somebody prophesied does not mean that the person is a prophet. Prophet is an office. The simple gift of prophecy is a gift of the Holy Spirit, of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Are you finding it difficult to accept what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21. You see that thing we said? Inadequate teaching. Inadequate teaching. Acts chapter 21. Is it chapter 21 now? Okay. Okay, yeah. Chapter 21, verse 
8. Let's look at it. And the next day, we that were of, company, of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist. You see an office there. Philip the Evangelist. We remember Ephesians chapter 4. You're not answering me again. Am I spoiling things for you? But it's good so that you will not, you will, you will not, be, uh, you will not be misled anymore. You will not be misled anymore. Okay? So Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven. We remember those, um, those uh, ushers that we are selected to share food. So which means that somebody can move from sharing food to an office. Some of us will say, ah, God has called me. I, you know, I'm a prophet. I know when I was commissioned. So I can't be doing these things. Philip, the only thing the Bible told us that he was a man full of the Holy Spirit. At that time, they were to be selected to share food. And then the apostles said, ah, we are going to, we're not going to minister to table. Let's focus on the word and prayer. So the apostles went to do word and prayer. And then selected some persons full of the Holy Spirit to go and do food. But it was this same Philip that entered certain places and did certain things. It was this same Philip that the Holy Spirit took hold of and used to preach to a man, to the eunuch, um, Ethiopian eunuch. Do we, we remember? So you see how service, 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 any kind of service can take you. That is any kind of service in the house of God. So you don't say, ah, do you know me? I'm an evangelist by calling. I am an apostle by calling. How can, how can they tell me to just go to technical? These people are wasting me. I can't be where I'm not celebrated. Because anything you are commissioned to do, you have to start from, from the down up. Please know it. Know it. That's why, that's why you see a lot of rascal. People are struggling in ministry. Because they were commissioned. They now carried seats and then opened church. And then they are struggling. Hallelujah. So we saw Philip the evangelist. The Bible said, which was one of the seven, okay? Verse 9. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. They were not prophets, but they prophesied. Do you understand what I'm saying, you know? They were not prophets. They were not occupying the, 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 the that's... Um, the office of a prophet, but they prophesied. So it's possible that when when service, when they service in their church or when they service in at home, they edify people. They the power, hand of the Lord will come upon them, and they open up their mouth. And then when they are done speaking, people leave edified, encouraged. Do you get the point? But then look at the next verse. And as we tarry there many days, there came down from Judea. A certain prophet named Agabus. I'm glad these things are just closely related in, uh, in those verses. A certain prophet named Agabus. Now, now let us see. And when he was come unto, uh, unto us, he took Paul's ghetto and bound his own hands and feet. That's a physical demonstration. And said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost. Now he is foretelling. Do you see it? Thus saith the Holy, Holy, Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this ghetto and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. So he prophesied here by the reason of the revelation God gave him. Now what he did here actually was revealing what this is actually a word of wisdom in operation being uttered by the, using the gift of prophecy. And he did this because he was in the office of a prophet. So that somebody called out somebody and said, see, you have a bunch of key. There are 15, this is a bunch of key. It doesn't make the person a, a prophet. So prophets are actually those occupying that office. And they don't operate alone. You're going to see that. There are a lot of things pastors are going to teach us anyway. 
Hallelujah. So gift of prophecy has no revelation in it. In, in gift of prophecy, there's no revelation in it. Okay? But um, the office of a prophet has revelation in it. So it's telling what will be. Prophesying does not tell what will be. It's just for edification, comfort, and exhortation. Hallelujah. So one in office of a prophet will have more of the gift of the spirit than just the gift of prophecy. So someone that is occupying the office of a prophet will have the gift of prophecy, will have word of knowledge, gift of word of knowledge, and or gift of word of, of wisdom. So these three can be operating, you know, in that person, in the person that has the, that is in office of, of, of a prophet. But a simple gift of prophecy is just, do you understand? And someone that occupies the office of a prophet, it's an office, it just, you know, it's an office that is occupied. The person operates in and operates from. The gift of prophecy, the unction of the Holy Spirit comes, the person manifests, and then that's it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. We can all prophesy. But we cannot all be in the office of a prophet. I'm trying to show you differences so you understand it. We can all prophesy. In the book of 1 Corinthians still, chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay. Verse 1. Look at what it says there. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Paul was not talking to one person. He was talking to the entire church. Do you understand? Okay, so we can all prophesy. Look at verse 5. I would that ye all speak with tongues. Now he's talking, about, talking to all of them. But rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues. Except, the inter except he interprets that the church may receive a divine. Hallelujah. Look at verse 39 of the same chapter. Wherefore, brethren, covet to do what? To prophesy, right? Covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. So everybody can prophesy. Pastor has told us that every believer in the average is a prophet. So we can bring word of edification, word of um, exhortation and comfort. And one of the ways the gift of prophecy is also expressed is through psalms and hymns. David did that a lot. Sometimes when he's in distress and the hand of the Lord comes upon him, he releases psalms. All those psalms you saw, all, those, all the psalms we have are actually words of prophecies. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So we can all prophesy, but we can't all be prophets. Okay. So for one to stand in the office of a prophet, that person must need to be called into the fivefold ministry as a preacher of the word and then have two or three of the revelational gifts at work. Okay. And then prophecy operates consistently in that person's ministry. Amen. Okay. I don't know if I've, if I've really clarified you on this. Uh, but I know when pastor comes up, he's going to, you know, take us a, a little deeper. The, the reason also I, I also made this emphasis, you know, on this is because God has also graced me to, you know, function in this, in the, in the two dimensions we just um, mentioned now. Both the office and then the gift. So I have at least a little more understanding of it more than any other. Hallelujah. Okay. So after that, we're going to get into the revelational gifts. The revelational gifts. Hallelujah. Okay. So the revelational gifts. Now, these are gifts that reveal things. That are in the mind of God. Things that are and things that are to be. 
First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one, verses nine to twelve. Hallelujah. Okay, look at what it says. First Corinthians chapter two. Sorry. Verses nine to twelve. But as it, as, it is, as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of, the, of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now the Bible is making us to know here, to see, to see here, that there are things, of course, God knows all things. Things that are, things that were, and things that will be. God knows all of them. But then, God now chooses to release these things to us. In fragments, God will not give us everything he knows. If he does, then we are going to be omni, omniscient. That is omniscience. That is omniscient actually, that's what it's called. Not omniscience. So we're going to become omniscient. So what does, that is why these gifts are called word of knowledge. Not knowledge. Word of wisdom not wisdom. There's a reason God, you know, the Bible called this gift, the names it's called, it called them. Are we ready? Okay. So let's look at the word of knowledge. How many of you have heard word of knowledge? You've heard, you've heard about word of knowledge. Okay. Beautiful. Now, some of the things I said earlier is going to make sense now. Okay. So word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning certain facts in the mind of God. Facts about people, places or things in the past or present. That's where the time stopped for word of knowledge. In the past or present. I want you to think about it. And then you begin to see that most of those things we call Prophecy, like you say, prophesy, prophesy, is not actually prophecy. Though it is being released through the vehicle of prophecy, but it's not prophecy. It is word of knowledge. So when I have, by the reason of the Spirit, I have a revelation of maybe you, about you, the things that have happened or the things that are, that's word of knowledge in operation. And you see, word of knowledge, I've actually discovered in my work with God, is that word of knowledge, that you don't need to come and tell somebody, particularly, tell, it can happen that way, I have a word of knowledge for you. It can happen that way. It can also happen during preaching. Because these things actually forge the education of the church. It can happen during preaching. Severally, severally. If I'm many times, most of the times, I had preached some examples I've used were actually word of knowledge being released. So sometimes some people will think that somebody has told me something. But no. I just come up and I, that thing comes and I use it as an analogy. And then some people think somebody must have told this person. I remember that. There are so many of them striking. I remember one of the days on a Wednesday. That day, that day, you know, there are times you just, it's as though you are enveloped. So that day there was something I was teaching. And as I was teaching, an analogy came. And I said, isn't the analogy? Very specific. And I said, you may be a teenager. Now, this is not a teen, this is not a teen's church. This is not KIC. But I said, you might be a teenager in your 16th or 17th year, and then you're pregnant, and then you don't even know where, you don't know what to do next and on. As I was saying that, Somebody came from our nature, a teenager in our midst, seated in our midst, 16, either 16 or 17, and she was pregnant. She came that day from our nature. 
I can't remember who introduced her. To, I don't remember who introduced her to me after service. So the person may think that somebody called me and said, Ah, I'm coming with a teenager, 17 year old in that spread. And how, why did I use that analogy? It's just the spirit that puts it into me. I remember some other time we were having, we, we, just, we just called out for women's meeting. And I started talking. And the hand of the Lord came upon me. Now, when I say the hand of the Lord coming upon you, it doesn't mean that you just... No, you know, those things. It's just, see, it's just because we like our mansiology. That's why a lot of people use it. Use it Because once we do it, people say, ah, that's the spirit. So I, I say rebuking a sister. I say, I don't see you. I don't see you in Friday prayer Zoom, Zoom meeting. I don't see you. I said, with what you are doing in church, if you're not careful, if you're not careful, the next thing we'll start talking about is that you are living with a brother. You're living with a man. And that's the next thing that will start happening. How many of you remember OG? I said, you'll start living with a man. I said, the orchestrations of the devil are against you. you know? I said, you can't, be, you can't be doing this kind of thing in church and then prayer is called and you won't answer. I said, you're being careful. Like I just focused on her. As I was talking, she was living with a man. I didn't know. She was living with a man. And maybe she would think that, ah, prayer co um, RP Connector has told me that she's living. No, I didn't know. And if I were her at that time, after service, she, she would come and say, ah, ma. Ma. So what of knowledge, something that has been or something is God just reveals it and this thing can come through maybe dreams or visions or just by knowing just by knowing the Lord can just reveal to you this this is what is happening now you say ah no you say but this is what is happening now this is what I want you to do now. This is what is happening now. And like I said, it can, you can use it in your private life. You can use it in your several times. Several, and I just be busy now, studying, busy studying. Then the next thing you'll literally say, get up and shout. Get up and shout. Pastor is on his way. It has happened several times. Several times. And then I'll now get up quickly, quickly. As I'm now dressing up, maybe now powdering my face, I'll hear the horn. I say, I knew you were coming. Several times. Now, can you imagine what will happen if we have a lot of people operating in the word of knowledge in church? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, this word of knowledge is not a mental, you know, you just look at something and say, ah, I feel this thing is happening. No. It just comes, you know. Now it's just a knowing, the way you know your name. Hallelujah. Okay, let's flow. So we have examples in the Old Testament and then we have examples in the New Testament. We remember the story of Samuel and Saul and Saul's lost donkey. We remember. Yes. You know, in the Old, Old um, Testament, we have a lot of people operate or rather most people operate in setting up these gates. Like the prophets, you see the prophets having the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, you know, and then prophecy. We remember what Samuel told Saul. He said, and by the time that we are done doing the main thing God wanted done, he now told him, your ass has been found. Please, don't ask for your ass, don't worry, ask for your donkey. Don't, don't bother about that. You can find that story in the book of 1 First, First Samuel chapter 9 hallelujah then in 1st Samuel chapter 10 verse 22 they came to crown publicly crown Saul the king publicly now because it has happened inside oh. but what happened Saul went a hiding he went to hide and they were looking for him it was re revealed Let, let's look at it 1st Samuel chapter 10 verse 22 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 22. So it was just revealed. Okay. Therefore they inquired of the Lord for that if the man should yet come, 
comforter. And the Lord answered, Behold, he had hid himself among the stuff. Because the Lord is, you know, when we say the Lord who sees me, you know, he's beyond rewarding you all. He's also seeing what you are doing. <laughs> eh? He's also seeing what you're doing. So anytime you want to do something, you know the Lord does. You make, sees you, make sure you're doing something that is glorifying him. Hallelujah. Then we also remember um, in, in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah was crying out to God and saying, Lord, Elijah, oh, that powerful prophet, Elijah opened up his mouth and said that he was the only prophet remaining. How did he not know? Do you understand? You see how these gifts work? How did he not know? There's even a situation Elijah said, ah, the Lord did not reveal this one to me. Because it is only when it is revealed that you'll be able to say it or you'll be able, do you understand? Because it is the gifts of the Holy, it's a supernatural gift. It's supernatural. It's not something you do by yourself. It's a supernatural gift. Okay? And then God told, ah, I have 7,000. How did Elijah not perceive 7,000 that has not bowed to bow? Hallelujah. Okay. Then we also saw Elisha and Gehazi. She is Elisha and Gehazi. Elisha was inside. Naaman was healed. Elisha rejected gifts. And then Gehazi now went and collected the gift. Elijah was inside. But he said, my spirit went with you. I saw you. How? You see why it's very dangerous, very dangerous to lie to your pastor. In fact, it's dangerous to lie. Very dangerous to lie to your pastor. Sometimes he will know, but he wants you to say the truth. He will know. He wants you to say the truth. Because if he now tells you, you now say, ah, pastor said, you know, he said, it is pastor that said that I did this thing. But you know you did it. He said, pastor said. Hallelujah. Okay. So then we, have, we see um, in the New Testament, Jesus and the woman in the well. I'm just trying to show you the manifestation of the word of knowledge. The things that happened and the things that are happening. Not the things that are yet to happen. That's not word of knowledge. The things that are yet to happen is not in the category of word of knowledge. So Jesus told the woman, you do not have, he said, go and call your husband. Jesus knew his state, her state. By the time she was done explaining, Jesus said, yes. You don't have a husband, you explained well. So Jesus knew her situation at that time. Hallelujah. Then we remember also Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts chapter 5. One to four. Remember Ananias and Sapphira? Everybody, nobody told them to bring go. It's just that they just want to, ah, how can everybody be, be spiritual and we are not spiritual too? How can people be selling their lands and then bringing it at the feet of the apostles? It's somehow now, let's, like, you know, let's follow trend. You know how this generation follow trend? Anything they want to talk about is so that they were trend. Anything, it doesn't concern them, they want to talk about it. This person die, they want to talk about it. This person win a award, they want to talk about it. They, they are, if you come to their world, they don't follow any line of thought. They follow trend. You've seen a lot of people that are like that. And it's so pathetic that many times people that have served the Lord, in the time past, when you go to their world, they are, you will be inspired. Now, when not, if you want any news that is happening in the nation, just go to their world. That's just what they do, they follow trend. So Ananias and Sapphira, they wanted to follow trend. And maybe it's in this generation, they would be even taking selfie with the apostles. Just so they are land in obedience to the Lord. True disciples of Jesus. So they went and sold their land also. Nobody told anybody to sell land. But by the reason of that common good, people were selling their lands and bringing everything. And they went and sold. Or something told them, nah, how do ah, you just sell our land and then bring everything? Let's divide it. Nobody had any problem with them dividing it. But where the problem was is that they now came and said, this is all of it. You don't know the danger of half-truth. You don't know the danger of lie. This is all of it. And then Peter now asked, why did you lie? 
to the Holy Spirit. It's not me you lie to, it's the Holy Spirit. And at that time, now somebody, so I, anyway, that's not what I want to talk about today because somebody might be saying, uh uh, so why did the Holy Spirit now kill them? Why did it wasn't as though the Holy Spirit killed them or not killed them. But the point is that there's, there needed to be a manifestation. Because you know, the power of God just came upon the church at that time. There needed to be a manifestation for people to see these things are not, they are not part of it. So they died. So the husband died first. And then the wife also came. And then my body. And then came. Three hours later. Three hours later. So which means it was something they agreed. Is it that they agreed or that they are operating? You know, when people operate in a certain dimension, they share the same spirit. Maybe they have operated in, in the spirit of a lie so much that what this person will do is what this person will do. And then she was asked, how is that everything? We saw the... That's scary. Me. That's how it is. And then the same people, as they were coming back, to bury the husband also to go. So that's word of knowledge. You can imagine if these gifts are operational. Not for people to be dying, no. Not for people to be dying. But <laughs> it is a nowhere to nowhere to hide something. That somebody will now go and steal somebody's phone in the night and then come Sunday morning to lead in praises. In a tea, hey, oh, quada, quada thing. You know what quada means? It's, it's something that is usual in a lot of gatherings. I don't use the word church. Something that is usual. There are even people that, some of you have ministered to certain ministers in certain churches. That's maybe they are ushers or choir directors or certain ministers to them and even them, they themselves are living in your place of residence. Living with women that are not their husbands, their wives. And living with men that are not their husbands. And sometimes they are chief ushers. Sometimes they are music directors in church. God gave us a privilege to pastor a certain fellowship some time ago. Just, you know, we, we, the, the fellowship went off and then we needed to help to build it up and... There was so much, if you want to understand what rascality is, then study that church before we came in. So much. That someone, I don't know, whatever idol, is it Nigerian idol? That was where he, there was something he did, is he in a party or whatever? And we had a conference, he rushed in from that place and took Mike to lead, lead in pra praises. Hallelujah. But you know, all these things are done in love. Like if I'm ministering now and then the Lord now tells me, ah, this brother, that these shoes he's putting on now, he stole it yesterday morning. Not this brother, this brother. He stole it yesterday morning. I won't come to him and say, you. You see this shoe? Now in front of everybody. That's what we see now. You call out somebody and then you now tell a lady, you see, see, you're wearing yellow pants. How, how will she go home? Is it not what we see? No, because these things, we're still going to look at how they are regulated. We have them, but how do we use them? Hallelujah. Bible said it is for the profit of all. Say profit. Profit of all. Except there, there are actually cases, though. Cases where maybe you have, you know, maybe privately encouraged, talked to, Corrected, talk to corrected, talk to corrected. And then the Lord says, stand here and declare it. You're still working in love. Because it's now to save other church members. Do you understand? But we don't go about releasing word of knowledge. Say you, 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 you did. And then in front of everybody. No, hallelujah. Okay. So like I said, it can come as a vision in the night. It can come as... A dream. So this, these are how these things are seen. Okay? So it also helps us in prayer. Oh, so beautiful. It also helps us in prayer. So if I know about something and then we come to pray, I may not say, ah, please, brethren, I want us to pray for Bro Franklin. I'm, I'm thinking that Bro Franklin committed a fornication yesterday. No, we don't need to. Do you understand? 
Because that's what's, you know, many times, most of, most of us are so gifted that we now use this gift to scatter the church. So you don't go to pray, pray as intercessors. It will now be a place where news, updates, people are not coming to pray, it's updates. So for 45 minutes, we are talking about, and then we now use 15 minutes. And sometimes we come to pray, we can use 45 minutes to charge. If there are sometimes as you're charging, the prayer is already stirring, you're already praying and on. But I'm talking about the one that you now come, you know, say, brethren, the Lord revealed something to me yesterday. I saw. So next week, as people are coming for prayer, they are coming to be updated, latest gossip in church. Hallelujah. Okay. So it's, it's, it's an aid in prayer. So if there's something you can say, please, can we begin to pray for Brother Franklin? Let's pray that the Lord will uphold him, that the Lord will help him, that the Lord will keep him, keep his feet from evil. Keep him, keep his heart. Can we, you know, you just bring it as a prayer point. Hallelujah. Okay. So word of knowledge never ever talks about the future. It never brings anything in and, and never talk about the future. It is word of wisdom that does that. And that's the next thing I want us to talk about. Talk about word of wisdom. So if you see word of knowledge in operation, you will know. And so you keep you stop saying, ah, somebody told Pastor this. Somebody told Pastor this. Many times when we come for communion service. Most of these cases, pastor is mentioning, came by the reason of word of knowledge. Do you understand? It came by the reason of word of knowledge. Amen. Okay, word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. Now, when we say word of wisdom, people say, ah, this, this lady, you have word of wisdom. See, you just talk now, everything is just, ah, it's just so easy. Your wisdom not be here. No, that's not, that's not what wisdom is talking about. This one is different. So, word of wisdom, actually, is a supernatural gift that talks about what is in the mind of the Lord concerning the future. Do you see it now? Do you see it? Now, does this look like what we call prophecy? It looks like the one we call prophecy, right? But that's word of, word of wisdom. Okay? That's what of wisdom. So it is not the wisdom to deal with the affairs of life. It's not that wisdom. So when the Bible said in the book of James, I think chapter 1, he said, any of you, is, is any of you lacking wisdom, let him ask God. It's not this wisdom that he's talking about. Hmm? It's not this wisdom. When the Bible said there are two kinds of wisdom, it's not this wisdom that he's talking about. So, there's the wisdom for living, that's the affairs of life, handling the affairs of life, taking care of things in your life, you know, living your life like a wise person. Most of those things we see in the book of um, Proverbs, that's not what we are talking about. The word of wisdom we are talking about now is a supernatural ability to know what is in the mind of God, not concerning the past or present, but concerning the future. Do you see it now? So there are two different things. Okay? So it is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning divine purposes and plan in the mind and the will of God. So it always speaks of the future. Always speaks of the future. It can be conveyed through the gifts of prophecy. Remember I told us that gift of prophecy is utterance, right? Utterance, you can understand. Utterance. So it can be conveyed through the gift of prophecy. The vehicle of prophecy. So just like word of knowledge, it can also come through vision or dreams. It can also come through visions or dreams. Do we remember the story of John, the beloved, the book of Revelation on the island of, of Patmos. Do we remember? Now, if we look at that beautiful story, we will see the word of knowledge and word of wisdom in operation. How? Word of knowledge 
God was, Jesus was revealing to John the state of the churches at that time. Sure, we saw that. To the church in Ephesus, to the church in, to the church in, he was telling them the state of the church at that time. And that's word of knowledge. Something that is present. And then he now started telling, the, telling um, um, John the things that will also happen to the churches. If they don't repent, if they don't. And then the things that will now happen at the end of time. That's word of wisdom. That's word of wisdom in oppression. Okay? Then, there's another beautiful story of Ananias. We remember Ananias, not Ananias of Sapphira. Ananias of uh, Saul that became Paul. Mm -hmm. We see that beautiful story also. Let's read it, then we, we, we extract. I'm trying to show you you know, how these things operate so that when you see them in operation, you will be able to say, this is what it is. Okay? Acts chapter 9. Okay, verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Now, the Bible called him a disciple. He wasn't an apostle. He wasn't part of the twelve. So, which means that anybody can have these gifts. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit distributes it as he wills. Okay? So named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision. Remember I told us that a word of knowledge or word of wisdom can come as a vision, right? Okay. Ananias. And he said, behold, I am, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the street which is called straight. Okay? And inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. Now that last statement is word of knowledge. But what he was to do is actually word of wisdom. He said, arise, go. This is what you're going to see. That's word of wisdom. But he told him, he prayeth. That's word of knowledge. Do you see it? Okay. And had seen a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. What is that? Which gift is that? Eh? And had seen in a vision, now he's talking about Paul now. And had seen in a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Word of wisdom, let me see your hand up. Bring it down. Word of knowledge. Let me see your hand up. Why do you say it's word of wisdom? No. 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 He said, he said, go to the street and then you're going to see one soul of Tassos. For he prayed. That is, he's praying. That is, this is what is happening now. And he said, and had seen in a vision. So which means this has happened to him. So he had seen you. In as well as you had not come. But he had seen you in a vision. This is also in Acts chapter 10. We remember the story of Peter. As Peter was having that encounter. With the unclean, uncleanness thing. That word of wisdom. God, okay. After that it was interpreted to him. This is what's going to happen. There are men waiting for you. You know, you're going to go to. At the time he was receiving the word of wisdom, it was also mixed with word of knowledge. Because this is what I want you to go to do because this person is waiting for you. Reason, God had already met Cornelius. Do you understand? And now he's now telling Peter that he has, he has met Cornelius and Cornelius is waiting for him to come. So it was word of knowledge at that time. God was telling him, this is the, what has happened. Now this is what I want you to do. Do you get the point? Okay, it's clear now, right? Okay, it's, it's very clear. Okay. He said, 
and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, okay, Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many, many of these, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to the saints, saints at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. What is that? What is that? Some people are not sure. People are not answering. No, you know, it, how, will I, how will I mark your correction? How will I correct if you've not written something? What is it? Word of wisdom. He, God is telling Ananias what Paul would do. That is showing, God, showing Ananias his plans and purposes towards Paul. Do we see that? Okay, the next verse. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Word of wisdom or word of knowledge. These will are not stick. You're not talking. Are you talking? Oh, you are talking behind somebody. So, eh? Or you're doing word of... Yeah. Wish, wish dead. So, it will be mixed. Hallelujah. Okay, so we understand that now. So, word of knowledge, something that has or something... The Lord is speaking to me concerning you. You came to this place using peace mass transit. That's word of knowledge. You came to this place using, and you would go back using agufero motos. That's word of wisdom. Do you see it? Amen. That's word of wisdom. So word of wisdom always talks about the future. Hallelujah. So, but like I said, it can be conveyed through that um, vocal. Um, ability of prophecy. Do you understand? Through the vehicle of prophecy. So anytime you hear words, foretellings being released through the word of, that's actually word of wisdom. Now, like I said earlier, that anybody that is in the office of a prophet definitely will have the revelational gifts in oppression. Now when we begin to talk about these gifts, each of these gifts have prominent, each of these, sorry, each of these offices have prominent gifts in operation in those offices. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when these gifts are manifested, doesn't mean that the person manifesting that gift is in that office. But if you're in that office, you are going to manifest certain of these gifts. Is it clear now? Is it clear? Okay. Now, not everybody will be in that office. But then, among us, the Holy Spirit is going to distribute among us this gift as he, as he wills. That's why I say that all of us can prophesy, but not all of us can be in the office of a prophet. You know? Hallelujah. Okay. So, like what we saw Agabus did. That's word of wisdom operating in the office of a prophet. Shall we saw that? Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Then the last of the revelational gifts is discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirit. It took me a little while to really understand this particular gift. Discerning of spirits. Hallelujah. Okay. Discerning of spirit. I wanted to ask someone, what do you think discerning of spirit is? But let me, let me teach. So this is a supernatural, you see all of them are supernatural, right? This is a supernatural insight into the spirit world. Now, the two other revelational gifts are supernatural insights into, for word of knowledge, events, places, things that has happened, that are, in, you know, present or past. Word of knowledge, events, things, people, places that are yet to come. Plans and purposes of God. 
But for descending of spirit, the sending of spirit is specific for the spirit world. The spirit world. Okay? So it's a supernatural insight to the spirit world. Seeing or hearing in the realm of spirits. Now, I did not say supernatural insight into demon world. Did I say demon? You know, anytime we say descending of spirit, what usually comes to your mind? Hmm? Shavu spirits. Uh -huh. But that's not what the Bible says. <laughs> so descending of spirit is just into the spirit world. Is the Holy Spirit a spirit? The Holy Spirit is a spirit, right? Are angel spirits? Are demon spirits? So, understand it now. Okay? So, it reveals the kind of spirit in oppression. It reveals the kind of spirit in oppression. So, when there is a supernatural manifestation, for example, what the descending of spirit does is to Reveal the particular spirit that is in oppression. What is the spirit of God? Or, remember the Bible tells, told us to test all spirits. You know, when the Bible said test all spirits, some people read it as test every devil, test every demon spirit. The Bible said test all spirits. Even the spirit of, even this, any spirit that is in oppression, the Bible said test. So that you can confirm that this is of God. It is not every miracle that is of God. It is not every, in quotes, seemingly or seeming word of knowledge. I'm using the word seeming because it's not word of knowledge that is of God. Do we remember the story of Paul that went somewhere to minister and the lady was following them? Everything the lady was saying, was it true or not? Was it true? It was true, right? Everything the lady was saying was true. And you know, that thing was enough to do what? To authenticate them. But that was, a, that was a familiar spirit in oppression. That was a demonic spirit in oppression. And you know that anytime demonic spirit is in oppression, what it wants to do is to thwart the worship of Christ, of course, unto itself. So if Paul hadn't done anything to that lady, what will happen is that by the time Paul then leaves that place, people will now say, ah, since this one's authenticated, this person authenticated these people, then, ah, then this person has the right thing. Do we understand what we are saying? See, we, we should understand these things even in church. There are familiar spirits. A lady that was with us some time ago, doing very well, doing very well. She had, you know, grown and, and, you know, she had discovered her purpose. Discovered her purpose and was walking in it gracefully. But then something, I don't know what, I don't know what she, maybe what she read or what she watched. I, I just could not tell. But I think she started seeking for something way away from the truth you know there are certain some persons that say they want to go to dimensions please if that dimension is not oporuso of the holy spirit please don't travel that dimension in the spirit there are many roads when you say supernatural does not just mean it's the only is the it's just when you get there also there are other things that happen in the spirit in the in the spirit realm that's why we say stay on course and don't be afraid that you're going to contact an evil spirit. If you still, no, it's just like if you're going to Enugu. If, you're, if your car faces this way and you're going, won't you get to Enugu? And then you're now following all those signposts. Or maybe you enter express. The point is that if you follow this express now and start going straight, I don't know if I'm right, I'm, I'm wrong. Where will you get to? She straight, Enugu. Maybe if you follow old road and start going straight, maybe to take you, get to somewhere to take you any other place. Because I know there are places you maybe around you do you need to court. But if it's express, go straight. Whether on bike or whatever, you get to Enugu. But if your car faces this way and you say you're going to Enugu, you will never get to Enugu. In this thing, you say you see yourself head bridge, Asada. Um, 
Benin. Straight. So, in the spirit, just stay on course. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's no need deviating, saying you're looking for higher dimension, higher than which higher. I'm not saying you should not seek for, you know, go deeper in your walk with God, but please let it be within the word. So, this beautiful damsel. So, she went to Thamesite actually, and somebody saw her and started prophesying. You know what we call prophesying? And started giving her words and said, Ah, this is what God wants you to. And deviated, when I say deviated, deviated her. Highly deviated her that God has called her to serve a certain, a certain, you know, certain things. And then she came back and she said, Mommy, somebody prophesied to me today. Said, I'm not moved by that. Yes, I learned it ahead of time. I appreciate prophecies, I appreciate word of knowledge, I appreciate word of wisdom. But who are you? We had ladies classic. Ladies class was supposed to start on Thursday. And on the Sunday morning, I went on, I, I was on call and I tidied my call Sunday morning. And it, mainly I drove out. So I just came out of the, you know, um, or, or just came out to put my seatbelt adjust. And then one young man, tall and handsome. You know, there are people that have future. They kind of sob soul and say, ah, this is the man. Or Eliab. Tall and huge, putting on white. If you look at him, you know he's a, what people call prophet. <laughs> and then he just walked to my, my side. I say, woman of God. I've never met him before. Woman of God. I say, ha ha. God has called you. You're going to pioneer a move. A move. Women. I see you. Women. Start talking. Start talking. Remember that we are about to start and as she was talking, one question, I said, who are you? He said, can't you see my, can't you see what he puts, um, that is an ID card. He said, can't you see my, and I said, I said, who are you? Now, at that time, I was addressing, not him. I said, who are you? By whose authority? Because my, I, my, my glass was whining. I said, by whose authority are you speaking this? He said, ah, ma, you know what I'm saying now. Can't you feel it in your heart? You know what I'm saying. I said, be gone. Be gone. He said, I said, sure, you're going to church. He said, no, I came to. I said, then be gone. Go. So you don't have any right to tell me this. I asked again, by whose authority? I drove and left. But some of us will say, huh. And then when I now come back, I'll now be looking at pastor somehow. Pastor is blocking me. I'm a pioneer. Women, driving women into the 28th century. Hey! And then you see a couple. If there's a church, anything on it, we say, it's not just in there, there's the So let these people release me because I'm a pioneer. By whose spirit? So descending of spirit tests. There are familiar spirits that can get in and see things that have happened in the past and can say it. So that somebody saying something does not mean it's of the spirit. And in this part of the world, we have been plagued with such persons, with such spirit. Because we are looking for signs. We are looking for signs. And that's why we follow them. Listen, any, anybody that you see that is operating in the body of Christ. Let me use that word, body of Christ. But is not operating by the spirit of God. The, person, the people that instituted them are the people that are wrong. It takes false brethren to make false teachers. You hear what I say? It takes false brethren to make false teachers. How many of you have gone to tell people about Christ and then invite them to church and they ask you, Pastor Gona Fuzo? Does your pastor see? What your money got Fuzo? I want somebody that I want somebody that will prophesy to me. And that's why some persons Sunday to Sunday, the ones they come to church, they just sit down like this, they are sleeping. I say, okay, Rugo. Hey, okay, Jebu, I'm on my Rugo. Onye, Teta. A Teta. I can even watch him here. The person, all the things that we are being said, the person is not here, just waiting for prophecy time. So, 30 minutes teaching, 5 hours prophecy. 
Those are us online, I'm using in quotes this thing. But we are the ones that wanted it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the ones, like, okay, look at, look at the teaching we are giving now. Look at the teaching we are giving now. The ones, now remember that when Jesus performed the miracle, how many people? 5,000. He fed 5,000. Performed that powerful miracle. When he now started teaching them, those people that ate bread and fish, oh, got up. Teacher, I can now say, This is not why we came. You're teaching us we eat your flesh and your blood. No, no, this is, not, this, is, this is a hard saying. Once teaching begins to come, but the reason that these gifts are the beautiful things that these gifts bring people, unbelievers, their signs to them, bring them to church, then we teach them the truth of God's word. So let's, so let's stop seeking these things because many times we contact spirits. That was how this sister I'm telling you about or got into something. She started getting into, oh gee, you know who I'm talking about. She started getting into um, many experiences. She would just be in the hostel like this and then the next thing she would be saying things, seeing, seeing things. I don't even know if the man laid hands because these things are transferable. She'll not be the next thing we saw. We, she left here. She left. With all my persuasion, she left. Fatherhood ended. Fatherhood. We finished for spiritual fatherhood. I wasn't spiritual father anymore. Everything ended. Mind. Mind what you hear. Who speaks to you prophesies to you. And I need to say here, here that the new creation, God did not design the new creation to be led by prophecies. But by the inward, inward witness, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, anybody that is born again can be and should be led by the Spirit of God. With my work with God, my few years of work with God, I've actually noticed that anything I am going to get as a, as a word of knowledge to me, I have already had it in my spirit. I've already known it. Now the word is now coming as a confirmation. God does not design that you be, you're looking for a husband and then you're looking for that person that will tell you, sister, this is your husband. People like signs. Even as all of us are looking. Even me, me, I like signs. Don't you like signs? Signs and wonders. Miracles. But the thing is, we are not supposed to be led by them. We are supposed to be led by the Spirit of God. If not, we'll go off, contact a spirit that is not of God, and then we run with it. A lot of people have gone off because of prophecy. You know this thing that is called prophecy, giving to them. Word of wisdom in quotes, giving to them. And it now stirs up. You don't profit in it. It now stirs up pride, stirs up arrogance. For some, some of us, it now stirs up depression. Stirs up things. We had a case like this some time ago. A young man, quite gifted, heavily gifted. I'm not going to deny that he wasn't. Heavily gifted. But you know, once pride comes in and some of that, it can corrupt a lot of things. They will come for intercessory prayer. People are being anointed. Have you ever seen your pastor anointing people for you? People are anointing people for you. You will go to somebody's house to eat. He is carrying olive oil in his bag. He finish eating and prophesy to you and annoy, and you sow seed into his life. It happened here. Just that God delivered some of us here that are looking at me. You know God delivered you. If not, <laughs> so that regulation is that submitting to one another. And that's why God gave us a head. God gave us a head. You can't be stifled. I've never been under pastor. In fact, it's even under pastor. I'm even expressing everything I have. Pastor will even call it forth. Pastor will call it. Pastor will sometimes ah, you what they go for now? Kiss the bear me ne full effect. You know, you know, see where? That's pastor will usually ask me. So he expects because I also, also some persons will think that ah, now that I've received this gift, I manifest now. This pastor will become become intimidated. Is your mind? Is your head? 
or maybe because your heart is not pure because if your heart is pure why, so why are we teaching it why is impartation coming do you understand you can't be saying that ah if I manifest now so let me you know some people say ah may you not do more than your boss so if you manifest now your pastor your pastor feed deal with you only just keep it low key but that's not God the point is that there are certain things that are resident in pastor that he's not manifesting the people that will manifest is us and if we are manifesting it not because it's not it flowed from his grace you need to know it flowed from his grace it flowed from his grace if you understand it so you one may even get into performing miracles and I may get into healings. And I may so say, ah, have you seen your pastor raised and you want to raise the dead? That man go, ah, he go vex for you. Oh. No, that's not how it flows. How many giants did David kill? People are not answering you. How many did his followers kill? Plenty now. If you read the book of um, First Corinthians, about, I think, five or six thereabout. And the Bible said that it was David that killed them. It was David that killed those giants. Because his men killed those giants. Because this thing flowed. Remember they entered into the cave as men in death. And came out as army of God. That's what God called them. As army of God. That's why when something, when David was about to be killed, they told David, don't come out again. Ah. He said, if they kill you, then we are finished. No, 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 don't, come, don't, mm -mm, don't go to war again. You know, there's this film I watched. Usually when I mention films, because it's clean. The Great War. I finished watching that and then gained more understanding of how God, even nature, understand that submission. So when, you know, natural men say things like, ah, I don't need my pastor's grace to be graced. He be, he, is, he, is he God? There are these creatures, all of them connected to the queen. No matter how much you kill them, the queen is reproducing. All their life connected to one, the queen. So if they go to invade a city, they have two missions. One most important, protect the queen. Then the next one, invade. But the most important, protect the queen. Sir? Okay, yes. Protect and feed the queen. If you see the, the, that is, there are other ones that, but the ones that protect the queen, heavy, that is if you see. And it's the queen that gives the order. Once the queen gives an order, wherever they are, the thing just gets, everybody just picks it and then responds. So their solution was to kill the queen. Is it not scripture? Scatter the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Oh, yes, or rather, keep the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. These are scriptures. That's why you don't go out there on social media and listen to natural men. That do, you know, I was telling pastor that when we say a natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit, how I explain it is, you know, eh? Do you know how to speak Elsa? You can't speak Elsa at all, Shebi. Just uh, Zo. Okay. 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 You know, you do know Efik. Not even, you don't even know the Zo of S Efik. You don't know, you don't even know how it sounds. Beautiful. But you see, eh? If they write Efik now, you know English. If they write Efik, you can read it. Now, you may not produce it with Efik, um, Yes, but you can read it. I don't know how ethic sounds, but maybe, you know, let's read, for example, Alsa, you see, B-A-R-C-I, Barch, it's a Nache. You can use English listen to pronounce, uh -huh. you know, you can manage. But when we say the natural man cannot understand, hmm? have you seen Chinese characters? <laughs> Do you pronounce? <laughs> so you, you understand?
understand what I say now? The natural, just the same way you are, yes, you have understanding what I'm saying. That is how the natural man sees the spiritual things. He cannot understand it. He can, he does not have the ability. Reason, because like pa 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 pastor said, they are empowered. The spiritual life is empowered by the spirits. They cannot understand it because it, they are spiritually descend. So when we come out and say that, ah, we honor our men of God, men say, lie, lie. Not be the same Holy Spirit they carry, I carry. Ha. Like, what's the difference? What's the difference here? You don't understand anything. You don't understand anything. That's why after you finish making that mental assessment, you now say, ah, this thing this man can do, I can do it now. Then you now check out. I, you know what we call so far ahead? You go so far. It's not a cost. I'm just telling you what is. I'm just telling you what is. That is why once there's a perfect alignment with the head, it flows. It's, you see it. It shows. It shows. Just like there's a perfect alignment with the Holy Spirit in Jesus, it shows. You see what Jesus did? He said, I can't do anything except it's anything I see my father do is exactly what I do. And that is exactly the same order he put in the church. Hallelujah. Okay, so I was talking about the selling of spirits. Okay? So, so the selling of spirit is not mind reading. It's not mind reading. Okay? It's not mind reading. Then it is not psychological insight. You say, ah, something is not right here. That's not... Then it's not mental penetration. It's not, you know, to look into somebody's eyes and then now say, ah, this, this is, no, that's not what it is. And then it is not also the power to discern faults of others. Discerning of spirit is not discerning the faults of others. Then it is not discerning of devils. It is not discerning of devils. You say spirit, we devils are also part of it could also be discerning the Holy Spirit, just any spirit. And then spirit in oppression. Just like I was explained. So there are certain times there's going to be, there, there'll be manifestation, certain manifestation, but it, it's not of the spirit. That's why when you walk in tandem with the Holy Spirit, you will always perceive, you will always know. Then sometimes with this gift, with this gift, you will be able to say this is the specific spirit in oppression it can be manifested in healing like Kenneth Hagen had you know had experiences where someone a demon is hanging on somebody's lungs demon hanging on somebody's oh, so that is certain specific spirits of infirmities you will see that spirit or perceive that the spirit is involved now, it's not all sickness that has involvement of the spirit. But if there is, with the discerning of spirit, you'll be able to know. You can walk into a room and say, something is not right here. Something is not right here. I sense the presence of an evil spirit. And then with the discerning of spirit, you'll be able to know what that spirit is. Specifically. Do you understand? Do you like this gift? You are not sure. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's very good. I had an encounter with someone, a relative. This person has over eight, nine years. He has just been a stress to his family. And his family has actually decided to, that particular day, something happened that particular day, so they decided to take him up and lock him. There was a claim that he beat his wife. I said claim because... There was no particular evidence. So there was a claim that he beat his wife. So they decided, his family decided to lock him up. So I was, um, do I say privileged or opportuned to go see the couple? Because I was also of the opinion, let him be locked up. But out of concern for some other things surrounding it, I decided to go. So all the while, the problem had been the man. That's what everybody has seen. The man has been the problem. That's it. But what happened that day, 
I walked into that place that day. Some things came up and then the man now came out and charged at the wife again. Immediately he started talking. I saw, that is evidently saw, the manifestation of spirits. So this was not just common being stubborn or common being heady. For more than nine, ten years, and I started addressing that spirit. I said, in the name of Jesus, he held, there was a rod he held. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to release this rod. He said, are you commanding me? I said, yes, I'm commanding you. Now, this person is far older than me, but I was addressing that spirit. I said, I command you. He said, you can't command. I said, I'm going to tell you what to do and you will do it. Now, leave this rod, get into your room and sit down there. He left the rod, got into his room and sat down. OG was there, I was with her. And then I settled the wife and then came inside. I sat down. I said, tell me what happened. This is somebody that I have not talked with for more than eight years, a relative. And then he said, you know I'm not supposed to talk to you. I said, I know, but today you talk to me. For more than 40 minutes, he was telling me what was happening to me. That was the first time ever he opened his mouth to speak. After that day, this was happening in 2016. After that day, that demon was dealt with. From 2016 up until now, that young man is the favorite of the family. You can trust him with anything. Because there was a discerning of an involvement of a spirit. Because people think, ah, this person is just stubborn. But that, I, it was, it was, that is, it was obvious as I was seeing that spirit. And then commanded it to go. So, this spirit releases, you know, shows. Then sometimes also, there's also the manifestation of the spirit of God. Some persons may not even know that the spirit of, you know, tell them, I sense the Holy Spirit in this place. I've been in a place where people gathered and then they were just there. They, they don't know what is happening to them, but they, they were just there. They were just, I, think I, said, I said, does it mean that you don't know that the Holy Spirit is in this place? And just that room alone, the power of God hit everyone. Like we just had mini cell fellowship there like never before. So pe the Holy Spirit can be in manifestation. People may not even know. And then that experience can be wasted. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why sometimes also the minister will come up and then announce the Holy Spirit is moving. I can see angels here. He's not saying it so that you'll be hyped. No, he's seeing it. He's seeing them. I can see angels. Sometimes they are specific. I can see two angels. I can see two angels there. I can see angels walking from seat to seat, giving people gifts. Hallelujah. So these things are beautiful. Okay, let's move to the power gifts. I'll be, I'll be quick. I'll be quick in this one. The power gifts. Hallelujah. So the first one is the gift of faith. The gift of faith. The gift of faith is the gift of the Spirit to believe in order that one might receive miracles. It is the Spirit to believe in order that one might receive miracles. To believe. That one might receive miracles. Hallelujah. So it's actually a supernatural thing. So it's a supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So it causes one to believe. And then the person is also able to believe against natural occurrence against natural occurrence, like natu something that will naturally happen. Okay, let's just flow. So it is not the gift of faith we know. There's the saving faith. And then there's this gift of faith. The saving faith is the one that we have that ushered us into Christ, that brought salvation to us. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians that we are saved by grace through faith. That not of ourselves, but, but, by, but it's a gift of God, right? So there's the saving, saving grace, saving faith that brought us to salvation. 
So that one is received at the point of salvation, the seven faith. But this faith I'm talking about now is the gift of the Holy Spirit that comes after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is, the person must have had an endowment from on high by the Holy Spirit before it is received. Now let me say something again here so that you understand what I'm saying. If this gift of faith is the same as a saving faith, then it means that before anybody is saved, then the Holy Spirit must have given this person the supernatural gift of faith to be saved. Which also means that we need faith to receive the gift of faith, which means we will not be able to receive the supernatural gift of faith. So we won't be saved. So you see the difference? So there's a saving faith. And every believer has faith. A measure of faith. Every believer has a measure of faith. Every believer. Just the same way it is in prophecy. Everybody prophesies. Just the same way it is in tongues. We all have this sign language evidence of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. So we are now talking about faith. The saving faith and then there's the gift of faith. This gift of faith comes to those who are already saved by, by faith. And then endued with power from on high. That's the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit as he wills now gives this gift. So it's a supernatural manifestation. Hallelujah. Okay. So all the gifts of the Spirit are prayed by faith. So the gift of faith also are prayed by faith. Hmm? Okay. So every believer has faith, but not all believers have the gift of faith. Okay. So gift of faith receives miracle. Receives miracle. Now, you discover that this group of faith, they usually work together. This group of faith work together. Like in gift of faith, for example, gift of faith usually work together with um, miracles and gifts of healing to perform, like a miracle, to perform a miracle. Now, usually, gifts of faith usually seem um, not to be loud, like not to be very active. That is active, as we can see, but it's there. Let me give you an example of what I mean, so that we remember uh, da Daniel in the, lion, in the lion's den. We remember that then. Now, that's a gift of faith in oppression. And it's that gift of faith and oppression that made him to receive his miracle of being delivered from the lion's den. Now, when he got there, he wasn't walking anything. He wasn't commanding those lions to, to shut their mouth. He had that gift of faith. He believed God, trusted God that this, he's going to be saved. And then he, he was saved. But then, Okay, I'll be, let me compare it to the gift of uh, working of miracles so that we can appreciate it, appreciate what I'm saying. So the working of miracle actually is active. It actively performs miracle. It actively performs miracle. So it's a supernatural intervention by God in the ordinary course of nature. It performs miracle. So it, it's seen. Legs are not... Um, are not equal in size. By the gift of miracle and healing and oppression, I command these legs and then they grow out. The other one grows out. Now you can see it. But you may not see faith, but you see the effect. Do you see? And usually, performing miracles, we usually see it happen, but faith you know, you need faith. Faith remains. If you're going to, that, that miracle to be perfected, faith will continue to be at work for certain miracles to be perfected. Hallelujah. Are we together? Okay, okay. Do we remember Moses? I'm trying to look for a perfect example. We remember Moses that divided the Red Sea. That's miracle. He divided the Red Sea, right? How long was the Red Sea divided? Hmm? 
Do you know? Can you guess? There were about three million of them. Now, as long as there was need for these people to pass. So, miracle was performed. But the gift of faith sustained that pattern of the Red Sea. Do we see that? It sustained that pattern of the Red Sea. I'm trying to find, you know, the right example to give you. Hallelujah. Sir? Peter and John. Okay, the man at the beautiful gates. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Please, can we get mic for pastor, please? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Can we get mic for him? Thank you. Okay, no, we are looking for examples so that you know with example you understand. And our, the example will not be the type a teacher will give you X plus Y is an answer, then the question will now be X, Y, Y. So, okay, so um, the man at the beautiful gate, remember? Peter and John saw the man at the beautiful gate. Thank you, sir, for that. Saw the man at the beautiful gate and then spoke to him. He said, um, silver and gold we don't have but what we have we're going to give you and then commanded the man to walk in the name of Jesus what did, he, what did they do to the man they held the man up right okay and then when he was reporting he said it was faith through it was faith through faith in his name that this man got healed do you understand what I'm saying so usually the gifts of faith the working of miracles and many times gifts of healing work together do we understand what we are saying? Okay, working of miracles. I've, 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 I've never operated in this gift before. And I don't even know if I've ever asked the Lord for it. I don't think I've ever asked the Lord for it. Not because I don't want, but I don't know. I've, I've not asked the Lord for it. I think I, I should start thinking about it. Hallelujah, working of miracles. You see miracles everywhere. Miracles, all manner of things. And then people will be saying, this is not true. This can't be true. We've seen a lot of them in, you know, a lot of them. Hallelujah. So let's see gifts of healing. Gifts of healing. Gifts of healing. And if you look at the scripture, you actually discover that it's gifts of healing. Okay? So this is actually the, um, the manifestation of the, of, of the spirit, the supernatural manifestation of the spirit to heal the sick and disease without any natural source or means. I, I've seen things. I've, I've seen and heard things. Real life testimonies. Real life testimonies of healings. So why, why, why is it called gifts of healings? Gifts of healings. Because in this gifts of healings, it seems as though there are other gifts in it. That's how I can explain it. So the other gifts in it is as though in someone that has the gift of healing will have more of a particular Healing of a particular ailment more in that person's ministry than others. Do you understand? There are those that are specialized in cancer. Cancer. Once you touch, pap, the person is healed. Sometimes they don't even touch cancer. Some others. That's one of pastors' specialty too. Eyesight. Even, even without being told, I, I remember the day we went to, we went to visit them. They carried pockets of... They didn't tell us anything. They just carried pockets of eyeglasses. And we went back home with two eyes. Those that went with four. Just ordinarily. I've also observed it. I've also discovered it. So some other persons, it might just be tuberculosis. Some other persons, it might... You know, just the same way we have it in medicine. Like the way you have internal medicine urologists, 
gynecologists, there are people, once you come in, they say that your womb is twisted, your ovarian tube is whatever, whatever. You can't leave that place without getting healed. Do you understand? So that's gifts of healing. And in this power gift, all of them have the gift of faith in oppression. The gift of faith in oppression. Because if you're going to heal, you need this gift in oppression. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's look at the three of them again. The three groups of, uh, of this gift again. The first one, we call them the utterance gifts. And they are tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy. And by now, we understand what prophecy is. Right, okay. Then number two, the next group is power. Okay, the ones that perform things. So faith, the gift of faith, the gifts of healings and then workings of miracles. Then the next one is revelation, revelational gifts, the ones that reveal things. And they are word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirit. And we say that all these things operate by faith and as the spirit wills. Hallelujah. I know you have questions, right? Okay, we are going to take your questions. But then, can you just bless the name of the Lord? Can you just thank the Lord for what you have heard? You can sit down if you want. Just thank the Lord for what you have heard. Thank the Holy Spirit. Can you appreciate him for what you have heard?